Good morning, everyone. I'm the Reverend Canon Rachel Firth. Welcome to worship with the community of St Peter's Parish Church, Huddersfield. This is the 13th week after the Feast of Trinity in Ordinary Time. Our order of service is on our website so that you can follow the service and join in as appropriate. Today in our service from the Old Testament, we hear more from the book of Exodus. Today about the first Passover. And then from Matthew's Gospel, we will hear about practical ways to resolve conflict between us in a church community. I invite you to sing with me now our first hymn, King of Glory, King of Peace. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of the God to whom we give account. And so we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, 
and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, God you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 I invite you now to bow your heads as we gather all our prayers in one and prepare to hear God's word for our lives this week. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and in all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We hear our first reading from Exodus. Our first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water but roasted over the fire, with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to stand if you're able, as we hear our Gospel reading from Matthew's Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. 
Glory to you, O Lord. The Gospel this week comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I truly tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. May I speak in the name of our living God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our readings today, we've heard two seemingly very different passages from the Bible. From Exodus, we have heard the next part of the story of God's people. They're in slavery in Egypt and Pharaoh will not let them go. Moses, the man who saw God's presence burning in the bush on the mountainside. Moses has answered his calling and returned to Egypt as God has asked him to, to demand that Pharaoh the earthly king releases the Hebrew people from slavery. Himself born a Hebrew, rescued and raised in the Pharaoh's household, who else but Moses could have taken on the task in hand? In some ways, the journey we're taking through the Old Testament at the moment feels like it exemplifies why many of us have struggled with the Old Testament. God is portrayed here as not only one who will bring death to a whole nation at the Passover, but as one who colludes and manipulates to actually reach that outcome. Remember, when Moses asked Pharaoh what he would do after each plague, the Bible tells us not that Pharaoh was hard-hearted, but that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. The easy thing to do, of course, is to avoid texts like this. 66 books in the Bible, uh, lots of other bits for us to be concentrating on that we're more comfortable with. I sometimes wonder if it's why so many Anglicans seem to avoid Bible study. They're afraid they might be forced to think about a God who doesn't appear to conform to their worldview. But Bible study, as we've discovered in this parish during lockdown, isn't actually someone explaining to you what you have to think about all the bits we don't have time for on a Sunday. It's exploration together of the places where our tradition is rooted. It's asking questions together that we may or may not find satisfactory answers to. And it's wrestling with how we understand poetry, law, history, allegory and myth to be woven together in such a way as to reveal to us God's will for us now. So we don't have to avoid the difficult stuff. We can wonder perhaps at the roots of the story about why our ancestors thought it important when they passed this story down verbally and it was then recorded in writing, why they needed us to know that our God could and would wipe out the children of Egypt. Is it history? Is it allegory? Our God is, after all, a great big God. We can ask, too, about the detail and what it is meant to convey to us now. God tells Moses that they are to start a new calendar for their people. From now on, everything will date 
for God's people from this saving act of liberation from slavery. Seems like a pretty, like a pretty good start, doesn't it? Every year in observant Jewish households to this day, Pesach is kept. The Seder meal is eaten. And this great story that we share is told in answer to the question, why is this night different from all other nights? Because God is doing something entirely new, which will define the Hebrews' release from slavery and make them God's people. God shows us that the nature of God is to cast off the oppressor and to bring freedom to the enslaved. And let us not forget that as Christians, what we're seeing is the roots of what we understand as our communion. We are seeing the sacrifice which we believe is fulfilled and superseded in Jesus, in Jesus' willing sacrifice of himself for our sins. Jesus, who we call the Lamb of God. And then in our gospel, on a very different scale, I think we are again seeing our God challenging our worldview, or perhaps our sense of what might be practical and sensible. As so often, Jesus tells us something that might be contrary to our experience. Jesus gives straightforward advice on what to do when there is conflict in the church community. When someone has sinned and you want to help them get back on the straight and narrow. I find it challenging that having grown up in the church and still being part of it, obviously, I don't think I've ever experienced anyone clearly and deliberately following these instructions which Jesus gives. Which is weird because some folks are very keen to project things onto Jesus he never said, mostly to bolster their own prejudice. Jesus' words here come right after he's told the parable of the lost sheep. And he goes straight on to tell us what it means to recover a lost sheep. And that it's not just something we throw our hands in the air about and leave up to God. He tells us it is the business of the church community. When a sheep is lost, when a person has sinned, we are called on to take these steps to bring them back. Perhaps if we always remind ourselves that these are actions that we take with love and because we want someone to be back with their loving church family, rather than feeling like we're telling somebody off, we'd find it a little easier. We're told that we speak to one another, that we speak with witnesses, that we speak openly in the presence of the community in our, temp our attempts to bring this person back into communion with us and with God. And what if they still don't want to know? Another awkward moment. We're told they are to be treated as Gentiles or tax collectors. What do you mean, Jesus? To be excluded, ignored, cast out? Absolutely not. Because for Jesus, Gentiles and tax collectors are people he wants to be his disciples. We see it again and again in the Gospels. Those outside the fellowship of faith, whether they started there or whether they put themselves there through sin, were to be called into fellowship, to be evangelised, to have the good news shared with them over and over again. And we will think about how many times when we hear next week's gospel. People are to be given the opportunity to have a change of heart. So if anything, when our internal strategy of reconciliation has failed, we're told in treating people as Gentiles and tax collectors to intensify our efforts to bring this beloved child of God back into community. 
because we are told that it is when we are at peace with one another, when we have made every effort of forgiveness, when we are united in our understanding of God, that is when Jesus is truly present and our prayers will be answered. That's why in our tradition you shouldn't come to receive communion if you haven't participated in the confession and absolution earlier in the service. That's why when we can, we exchange the peace reaching out to one another to resolve conflict and be at peace. It's not just some messing about that we do. It means what it says and it does what it says on the tin. We resolve our conflict before we come to the altar, when we are gathered together, two or three, that we might know Jesus' presence with us and that in our Passover lamb, God continues to do something completely new, bringing liberation to our captivity in conflict. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, loving and faithful, we thank you for the chance we have to meet together in church or to meet together via these recorded communion services. Thank you for the technology that allows us to do this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church around the world. We pray for those places where the people of your church are trying hard to help those that are caught up in misery and destruction and so much conflict. Father God, we just ask for your blessing upon those people who are trying so hard to keep your love alive in those places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who work for peace, for those who work to help the sick and those that suffer in any way, shape or form. Father, we know that you are with those who love you, 
each and every moment of every day. We thank you for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for those who work for charities, raising money to help those in any kind of need. We especially pray as well today, Lord, for those charities that have suffered during the COVID epidemic where their fundraising has had to be curtailed. So the funds that are coming in have stopped in some cases. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have lost loved ones in the last couple of weeks. We pray that they will feel your comfort. Pray that they will feel your love. We pray for the souls of those who have departed this life. Father, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. May they rise in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> Father, we thank you for the grace that you put upon us each day. The grace that helps us to move forward, even if it is only very slowly, to recover from all that COVID-19 has brought, the lockdown, the lack of companionship. We pray for those who have been lonely in this time, Lord. We pray for those who have been frightened. We pray that with your help, they'll find the courage to start to live something like the beginnings of a normal life again. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A big thank you to all this morning's contributors for our readings and our prayers. Let's sing together once more now. Rise and hear the Lord is speaking.
I invite you now to join me in this virtual and spiritual communion, praying that we may connect here with one another and with our God. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to this table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your son, born of Mary. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. So we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the God-bearer, 
Peter and all your saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. As I receive these gifts on behalf of our community, may we all know the power of God's love in this moment and in our lives each day. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. I invite you to bow your heads once more as we thank God for all we receive when we gather in worship, wherever we are. God, our creator, you feed your children with true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh. 
you and keep you. Amen. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Amen. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those who you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.